Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to select the parts for a PC build that will cost about $500. In the next video we're going to be putting this computer together. However, the hardest part of many builds can be selecting the right components, and so I thought we'd have an episode dedicated to this task. Before planning any PC build, it's always worth reflecting on whether self-building really is your best option. Especially if you want an entry-level system, there are now loads of alternatives available, including many PCs that cost from $100 upwards. And so building your own desktop is often not the cheapest option. This said, building your own PC can allow you to customise everything to your requirements. And it can also allow you to work towards a final system in stages as you can plan for future upgrades and expansion. Thirdly, building your own PC is an enjoyable hobby as well as an educational adventure that will transform your understanding of computer hardware. And lastly, when you build your own PC, the end result is a computer in which you have an emotional investment. And for some people, this is what's most important. Right, having committed to self-build, let's select the parts for our entry-level system. And here, a critical decision is whether to fit a dedicated graphics card or to rely on integrated graphics. Or, in other words, we need to decide if our core system will comprise a motherboard, CPU, RAM and a graphics card, or just a motherboard, CPU and RAM. Over the past few years, this has become a harder decision, as few new low-cost graphics cards have been released. Not least, for several years now, all of NVIDIA's new models have had a launch price of at least $250 and often considerably more. And in parallel, the GPUs integrated into some CPUs have improved. Hence, in my most recent budget PC build, I used a Ryzen 5 5600G processor and relied on its integrated GPU. And still today, the 5600G can be used to construct a great entry-level system, as can more recent AMD chips such as the 8500G and the 8600G. Indeed, if you want to build a PC for under $500 with integrated graphics, these are the processors I would recommend. However, this time around, I've decided to build an entry-level system with a dedicated graphics card which, for a bit more money, will offer more possibilities for things like video editing and gaming. Options are limited, in a build costing $500 or less, but we will still end up with a system with better GPU performance than if we relied on integrated graphics, and none of our system RAM will have to be dedicated to the GPU. Oh, and because my last budget build was based on an AMD processor, this time we're going to use an Intel chip. So, what's our processor going to be? Well, I've selected this, a Core i3-14100F. This is a 14th generation Intel processor, launched in the first quarter of 2024, and currently sells on Amazon for about $90, £73 or €88. Euros. Intel has now released some 15th generation processors, but these are all more expensive, currently costing at least $230. And indeed, very often when doing an entry-level build, it's most cost-effective to use an older generation processor, be it from Intel or AMD. Specifically here, our i3-14100F has got four of Intel's performance cores, with a total of eight threads, a base clock speed of 3.5 GHz, and a maximum turbo speed of 4.7 GHz. It's also important to note that this is the i3-14100F rather than i3-14100, with the F suffix meaning that it doesn't have an integrated GPU. And indeed, we can see on the box that a discrete graphics card is required. 
And so what all this means is if we fitted this processor into a motherboard and plugged a monitor into one of the motherboard's display connectors, we would not get any output. Whereas if we used an i3-14100, the non-F version, it includes Intel UHD Graphics 730, so we would get a video signal. And if you're wondering, I've chosen the 14100F because it's currently about 30% cheaper than the 14100, and the money saved can help pay for our graphics card. Next, we need a motherboard, and here we're using this Gigabyte B760MDS3H DDR4, which is based on an Intel B760 chipset. And if you want to learn more about chipsets, just watch the relevant Explaining Computers video. Anyway, when choosing a motherboard, the most fundamental thing is that it must have the right socket for your processor as well as appropriate support. So, when planning a build, do a search for your processor and uh, go to its manufacturer webpage. Here we are on the page for our Intel i3-14100F. And if we scroll down here enough, it's under uh, where is it package specifications. There we are. We can see that the socket is an FC LGA 1700, which stands for Flip Chip Land Grid Array 1700. And here, 1700 indicates the number of connection pins, which I find absolutely astounding, 1700 connections to this processor. Anyway, once you know the socket, you can search for a motherboard with the correct one and research it on the relevant manufacturer web pages. And so here we've got the pages for the motherboard I've chosen, the, the Gigabyte B760M DS3H DDR4, where we're going to click on support, like that, and go to CPU support, and this shows us all of the CPU supported by this processor. And if I do a Control F for find and do a 14100F like that, there we are. Here is our processor with a no internal graphics. As we know, it has to have a discrete graphics card, and it is clearly supported by this motherboard, so we know the two will work together just fine. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to do the checks I've just shown to make sure your processor and motherboard are compatible. Returning to the board itself, as the name suggests, it uses DDR4 or Double Data Rate 4 memory, which is not as fast as the latest DDR5 standard. However, DDR4 is still pretty decent and saves money in an entry-level build. Specifically, this motherboard currently costs $109.99 or £91.97, whereas the virtually identical version which takes DDR5 RAM costs about $20 or £20 more, as well as using more expensive memory modules. I'll detail all of the features of this motherboard when we unbox it in the next video. However, here it is worth noting that it has two M.2 slots that can take an NVMe SSD, as well as four slots for DDR4 memory modules. And so this will leave us with both M.2 drive and memory upgrade possibilities, as we're going to be fitting just one SSD and two memory modules. And guess what? Here we have our RAM, which is a 16 gigabyte Corsair Vengeance kit containing two 8 gigabyte DDR4 3200 DIMMs. This currently costs $31.99 or £29.99 and has been selected to match both our motherboard and CPU. Indeed, if we look back to the motherboard web pages and click on specification, we can see that it supports DDR4 memory modules in a range of speeds up to 5,333 mega transfers per second. And so why are we using 3,200 mega transfers per second memory modules? Well, if we go back to the processor web page and we scroll up to find the memory specification, here it is, we can see that our chip supports memory speeds up to 4,800 mega transfers per second when using DDR5 RAM, but only 3,200 when using DDR4. And so there's no point spending more money purchasing DDR4 modules faster than 3,200. 
Now, if we did fit our motherboard with RAM that's faster than 3200, everything would work just fine. But the memory would only run at a maximum speed of 3200 mega transfers per second. And if you're considering upgrading the processor in your system in the future, it may be worth purchasing faster memory that it will support. However, in general, and especially in an entry-level build, I would advise purchasing RAM that's no faster than both your motherboard and current processor can support. Right, we now get to a potentially controversial purchase, which is this, our graphics card, which is a Sparkle Intel Arc A310 Eco with 4GB of RAM. This currently sells on Amazon for $99.99 or £98.99 and is an entry-level Intel card launched in late 2022. As I discussed earlier, choosing a graphics card for a PC build in the $500 bracket is tricky and I agonise greatly over what to fit. This card with an Intel A310 GPU is at least twice as powerful as the integrated graphics we would have got if we purchased an i3-14100 rather than our i3-14100F, and you could go that route and use the integrated graphics on an i3-14100, as I'll detail in the video description. However, in this build we are using a discrete graphics card, and alternatives I considered but rejected to bring the build in for $500 were those based on an Intel Arc A380, B570 or B580, an NVIDIA RTX 3050 or RTX 4060, or an AMD Radeon 7600. Cards with these GPUs are all more powerful but also more expensive. However, you can sometimes find great deals on older cards and so it's worth shopping around. Ultimately, with graphics cards, as with everything else in life, you get what you pay for. And it's always possible to spend more, as some hardcore gamers will I'm sure advise. But this 4GB A310 card will allow us to run a video editor like DaVinci Resolve, as we'll test out in my next video. And an A310 is also capable of fairly decent 1080p gaming. Right, let's now turn to storage and my choice of system drive. And here I've opted for this crucial P310 500GB M.2 NVMe SSD. This is a PCIe 4.0 drive that will take advantage of one of the PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots on our motherboard, and it currently costs $41.99 or £39.50. Without doubt, this is a budget SSD which does not include any DRAM. Personally, I'm not concerned about this in an entry-level build, and I've been using many crucial SSDs very similar to this one for several years. But if you want to know more before making a purchase decision, just check out my video explaining SSDs, the price-performance trade-off. Next, we need a power supply, and here I'm going to fit this Corsair CX550, which I have in stock following a previous project. When selecting a power supply, it needs to have sufficient wattage for all the components in the system, which you can check using an online calculator, and I'll link some of these in the video description. And here, this 550 watt model is more than sufficient, and it leaves some headway for future system upgrades. With a budget build, it's always tricky to balance power supply quality and energy efficiency against price, as a poor quality, inefficient power supply is not a good investment. And yet, it would be strange to fit a power supply costing, say, $100 or more in an entry-level system. And so, for our purposes, this Corsair CX550 is a decent branded model, costing $59.99 or £49.98. And if you want to learn more about power supplies and power supply options, just check out my video explaining PC power supplies. So there we are. We've now selected a processor, a motherboard, 
some RAM, a graphics card, an SSD, and a power supply. And at the time of making this video in March 2025, the cost for all of these comes to, wait for it, I've got it on a piece of paper, it comes to $434.04 on Amazon.com or £383.40 on Amazon Co UK. And I have included links to all of these parts in the video description, and I've also set up dedicated sections in the Explaining Computers Amazon storefronts so you can find the parts there as well. And so the final thing we need to choose is a case. And here I'm still making judgments. I haven't actually got a case yet. And in part, this is because there's such a variety of cases now available at all sorts of different price points. You can pay a massive amount of money for some cases. And really choosing a case is largely a question of personal taste. Although there are a few things to be aware of. First of all, I think it's very important to get a case which has got both a front and a rear fan so you get good airflow, good cooling. And ideally, if you're buying a case at the budget end of a market, make sure it includes those front and rear fans. Secondly, a case must be big enough for the selected graphics card. That won't be a problem here because this card is only about 150, 160 millimeters long, something like that. It probably has the exact length here now on the screen. And the final thing you need to be aware of when choosing a case is the drive requirements you might have. Now, in this particular build, we've only got an M.2 SSD or our system drive, and it's going to be plugged straight into the motherboard. And indeed, the motherboard here has got two M.2 slots, so we could plug a second SSD into the motherboard as well if we want to expand in the future. So there's no need for any drive bays in the case. But if you do want to fit two and a half inch drives, three and a half inch drives, even a five and a quarter inch optical drive, you need bays for those in your case. And there are still some cases available with accessible front drive bays. This said, right now, I'm leaning towards purchasing this Gamdias Talos E3 mesh case, which comes with three 120 mm RGB fans, which I know some people will like and others will disapprove of. But the case costs £52.99 or $59.99, which is a little bit more than some cases on the market, but a lot less than most others. And putting together a final parts list, this brings our total build cost to $494.03 or £436.39 for an entry-level Intel PC with a dedicated graphics card. Choosing the parts for a PC build can be a very time-consuming, but also a very interesting and enjoyable process. And I think this is because it involves making both technical and financial decisions, as well as the practicalities of keeping track of what components are actually available. As I've said in the next video, we're going to be putting all of these parts together to build our final computer. And Mr. Screwdriver is already very excited indeed. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.